Hello. We'll go ahead and get started. First question, Kelly Eco. Hey, Coach. Just um, so when it comes to incorporating John into the offense, how much stuff did you take from the things he did in Washington? How much stuff did you take from things that you did in Dallas last year? And how much did you take from stuff that the Rockets had in the previous years? Um, that's a good question. I, I kind of just done it the way that I'm doing it as far as kind of what we did in Dallas, some different ideas, some conversations that I've had with him where he likes to be on the floor. Uh, and, and it seems to be working out pretty well. You know, we'll, we'll obviously be a work in progress as far as allowing him to play to his strengths and, um, helping his teammates play to theirs. But, the way that we play with uh, the space that we allow guys to have and the, his ability to get into the paint, whether it's using a pick and roll or attacking a closeout or getting out early and getting in transition, uh, it seems to fit him very well. So I wouldn't say I took from other places, but I kind of crafted something that I, that I thought made sense. Mark Berman. Hey, Stephen, uh, John Wall just said he had had a chance to talk to, to James Harden when he was in the building, when he got tested, had an individual workout with John Lucas. Is there anything further you can share with us? Have you had any more communication with him? Any other information about how things are going? No, as far as I know, he's been uh, in the testing protocol and, and doing his thing, and now he's able to do individual workouts and kind of join the team. Today was just a little bit of a crazy day, so I haven't been able to connect with him, but I'm looking forward to uh, getting him on the court with the team and uh, we'll start a relationship there. But but uh, it's it's moving in the right direction and, and it's very good. I'm sorry, did you say he was with the team a little bit today? No. No, you said he's just, he's just there for individual workouts. Yes. Okay, thank you. Jonathan Fagan. Um, you start a stretch of uh, what, four games, you know, every other day uh, now and Looking at your schedule, that's you have that more than any team in the league. Every other day schedule, fewer back-to-backs than any team in the league, or the fewest, tied for the fewest. How does that work uh, for your team? you got guys coming off injuries, time out, to not ever have almost the two-day break, to, but you do have fewer back-to-backs. You, how do you balance that and get the practice time but not overdue when you've got a schedule like you're starting tomorrow and that you have throughout the season? It's hard. That's a, that's a really good question. And that's something that I've put a lot of thought into and had a lot of conversations about. And it's hard because you want your be- you want the players to have their best for the games, but they also have to be prepared. And there's protocols and there's, you know, a lot of stuff that we have to do as far as when we're in a city, are we going to be able to shoot around? Do we have to do a ballroom shoot, shoot around? Stuff like that. So... Um, it really is taking each week, planning it, um, thinking about the rest part of it, working with the performance team on the rest part of it, and, and doing it smartly. Because as you said, we do have guys who are coming back from injury and they're playing every other day and, and, and all of that, along with the trying to establish something new here. It, it, it makes it a little bit tougher. So um, that's something that we talk about a lot and there's a lot of planning that goes into it even just the details of it do you have to give guys days off even in these preseason games and do you know if guys can play the five back-to-backs you've got yeah we haven't really even tackled the back-to-back part of it we're really concentrating on these four games and there may or may not be it really depends on how guys are feeling you know so we're going to go into this first game and and it uh, looks like everybody's going to play in that one. But the game after, we're really just going to have to see um, how their bodies how their bodies are feeling, how the performance team feels about them playing in the next game, and uh, really being smart about Saturday because Friday is kind of the easy part as far as monitoring minutes and, and making sure that guys are doing what they're supposed to do um, game plan-wise. But then the Saturday – we have to be smart. We've gone a long stretch with practices pretty much every day. And, um, you know, Saturday is going to be a day maybe of recovery and, and film and um, maybe not going to the court. So it really 
it's so with such a short period, we really have to be smart about how we're doing it. So I'm taking it week by week, but then within the week, it almost has to be day by day, game by game. Thank you. Adam Spolin. Hey, Stephen, I've got uh, two questions. Uh, first, is it your expectation that if all goes well with the protocols that James will be able to join you at practice on Monday? Um, that's a good question. I don't really know the answer to that. I know they could kind of work out that way, uh, but there's a certain number of individual workouts that he can have, and then there's He's following the protocol, you know, and, and when he's done with the protocol, he'll be in practice. And that's that's where I'm leaving it. And then you said that you were taking this as December 6th until the 23rd. Does having to travel for, you know, a weekend and play a couple of games, does that hurt what you're trying to build up to, to get to? Not really, because that's the reality of the NBA. So um, being on the road builds camaraderie at some level, but it also helps us as far as our routines and the structure of what we're going to be doing on these road trips, which will be a little different because there are pro different protocols that are in place for our health and for the health of the players. So um, doing having a trial run and, and doing it in the same city and not having to fly from city to city early in the preseason actually probably helps us as far as our, our goal, which is the 23rd, and beyond that, ha having some sort of, some set of normalcy, some sort of normalcy wh when we get on the road. Jerome Solomon. Hey, Coach. With every mention of you, it's first-year head coach, rookie head coach, et cetera. But it, it, people around you have all said that you're uniquely qualified to handle – that sometime craziness of the NBA. Do, was, was that part of your interview processes and, and what impressed you impressed upon the team that you've seen it all and almost done it all except from as a head coach position? Um, yeah, a little bit. I, I just tried to kind of tell in the interview process, just tell them who I, who I am. And I do have a lot of experience. I've been in a lot of situations, uh, Worked for some great coaches. I did have 21 games of head coach experience when I was with Charlotte when Steve Clifford got sick. So um, I draw on a lot of those experiences as I'm going through these first few weeks of, of being a head coach. So as far as being a first-time head coach, yeah, I am a first-time head coach, and there's going to be bumps in the road that go along with that. But um, the experience that I've had leading up to this has definitely helped. I've drawn upon not just a lot of experience, but experiences, but a lot of people who I've uh, leaned on over the years and have given me some great advice. And, and aside from the COVID thing, which everyone is dealing with for the first time, it, there's not a lot that you haven't seen in the NBA. Is that <laughs> fair to say? That's fair to say. That's fair. <laughs> I mean, between, you know, my dad playing in the league for 16 years and then being a coach in the league for 15 years. And, you know, I've been around it since I was born, basically. So there isn't really much that has happened in the NBA that I haven't seen. We'll take two more. Mark Berman. Stephen Barry, all the stuff. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Um, you talked about all the years you've been doing this. Well, here you are. I know it's a preseason game, not a regular season game, but you have your arms around tomorrow night. You're going to walk out on the floor, and it's your team. It's your, it's your, your, your dad will be watching, I, I would imagine, and you envision what that's going to be like for you for the first time. It's going to be really cool. It's, I'm really looking forward to it. Like you said, it's a preseason game, and, you know, you try not to get caught up in all of the other stuff, right, and, and enjoy the moment. And, and there's so much other stuff going on, obviously, and – um, there's game planning and late game situations and making sure I'm connecting with the, the staff and the players and ownership and Rafael and um, that, that moment when the game starts, I, I will have to kind of remind myself to just take a minute and, and enjoy because um, I, I do believe that you can get caught up in all of the minutia 
which is very important minutia. But um, at, at some level, the reason that I'm here is because I love this game and I love being a, a coach. And um, I'm, I'm going to take a minute and, and just sit back and, and enjoy it. Just a minute, because we'll have to get started. Is it crazy to think you've worked all your life to be here for that moment tomorrow? Is, do you have your arms around that thought as well? Not really. I mean, it, it, it's funny because you work so hard towards a goal and you, you achieve it. And it's like, now what? But for this one, I worked so hard for this goal and I achieved it. And now there's so much that goes into it. So, uh, so, you know, it, it's, it's something that's hard to wrap my hands around as you say, but, uh, you know, I, I'm really enjoying every single day of this experience and uh, looking forward to taking that enjoyment and that positivity and um, spreading it around to, to the players, the fans, the partners, everybody. And last question, Kelly, you go. Hey, Coach, I remember we asked you yesterday about your starters and you said you guys had to you know, talk more about it. Is there any more clarity on who could potentially start tomorrow against Chicago? Not really. Not really. No, no update from yesterday. We're still working through it. All right, thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.